Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless your name this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We come before you with joy this morning, God. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, Father God. We choose joy today. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord this morning. There is joy in this place. The Lord is here. Glory on each face. The Lord is here. I can feel this warm embrace. The Lord is here. So come on, let's rejoice. The Lord is here. There is joy in this place. The Lord is here. Glory on each face. The Lord is here. I can feel his embrace. The Lord is Let us 
Lord, to God. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. We're talking about Emmanuel. Anybody come to magnify our Savior? Anybody know that the King is exalted? I need you to lift your hands and give him worship. Lord, we bless you. We honor you. We call it a privilege to be in your presence. Anybody know it's a privilege to be in his presence? Hallelujah. Glory, Lord, we worship you. We worship you right there. We worship you. Let the room fill this place. We worship you. Come on, fill it with your worship. We worship you. In spirit and in truth, we worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. We worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your mind on Jesus. The King is exalted, and he deserves our very best. Hallelujah. He is exalted. The King is exalted, and I, I will praise him. Say he is the King.
The king is exalted. Come on and lift him up. Do I have any grateful folks in here? Did I have anybody that came to lift him? Come on and bless him. We love you, Lord. We thank you, God. We celebrate you, O king. We celebrate you, O king. We give you praise.
worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Hey, Come on, is there a worship in the house this morning? Is there a Lord, I love you in the house this morning? Is there a thank you, Jesus, in the house this morning? Come on, he is exalted. Is he exalted this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. You are good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on, lift those hands and sing. You are good. You are good. Hallelujah. Everybody say you are good. We're talking about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Say you are. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on one more time with one voice. Everybody say, Lord, you're good. Yeah, you Lift your voice in your own way and bless the Lord and we exalt you and we magnify you and we glorify you. Come on, worship us, let loose and we magnify you and we exalt your name. Come on and stir this atmosphere and we exalt you. Even the more, Lord Jesus, come. Even the more, Lord Jesus, come. Come on, speak well of him this morning. Speak well of him this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. We give you glory, give you glory, give you glory. He Let's stay right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, yeah, come on, I feel. Come on, I feel the temperature rising. Come on. When the saints go to worship, when the saints go to worship, when the saints go to worship, Lord, you're good. And you're exalted, Lord. In my life, you're exalted. In this church, you're exalted. Among this people, you're exalted. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Come and wave those hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be exalted, be exalted, Lord. We exalt you, we exalt you. I know it's the holiday season, we exalt you, Lord. You're the reason, you're the reason, you're the reason, you're the reason. You're the reason, you're the reason. You're the reason, you're the reason. Let that river flow, let that river flow. Oh, yeah. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good, Lord.
Everybody last time you That's my story and I'm sticking to it. You are good. Oh, we say you are. Hallelujah. You are good. Come on, let's receive, sister. But then she gives us a welcome this morning. The microphone, bless the Lord. Glory to glory, glory to glory to glory to glory. He's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. Oh God, oh God, it's a flow in the house, yeah. He's a good God, he's a good God, he's a good God. 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 Holy is He. 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 Yeah, 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 It's a flow, it's a flow, it's a flow, it's a flow. Oh, God, he's a good God. He's a good God. Even as the tears flow in the people of God's face, we are broken in his presence. We're hungry for his presence. We're asking for his presence. We're longing for his presence. And he's here. He's met us here right now. Oh, it's an awesome word in the place today. We are high in expectation. We believe the report of the Lord. We've dropped everything negative at the door. And we've entered into the gates. Oh, my God. We're expecting a move. We're expecting a move. We see the miracle. We see the miracle. We know he's good all by himself. We welcome you to Hosanna Family Church. Oh, miracles are here. Signs and wonders are here. The anointing is here. And most of all, the word remains here. We're under the awesome leadership of Bishop Lamont Hillard and his beautiful wife, Tiger Hillard. Oh, we can't be God's given. I'm telling you, he's given us some shepherds. Oh, my God, that is just taking us to a new dimension. They're taking us somewhere that we've never seen in God. We want you guys to join in with us in praise and worship. Get your offering and tithes in your pocket when you stop. And we want to give all that we have unto the Lord today. Come on and let's celebrate Jesus corporately. Online, let's celebrate corporately. We love you guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. Amen. Point to somebody say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen. Welcome to my father's house. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's receive Elder Hillard followed by Sister Jamie at this time. Let's give God praise. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you, Hosanna Family Church. Glory be to God. This is the season that we celebrate his birth. Amen. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Oh, it's a wonderful thing to be in this house one more time. And at this time, I'm here to let you know that we are going to be a blessing this season. Amen? Tis the season. Amen? So our lovely Lady Hillard had a birthday. Come on, clap your hands for her birthday. For another year, God allowed her. And we thank him for it. And so we were asked to give $75. If you haven't done that, we turned that in last week. Please do accordingly. We asked for a total of $125. To, so today is the day that we give the remaining $50. Amen. And for you online, hello. We love you here. And we ask you to make sure you join in, give online. 
give in person. We're going to do a marvelous presentation at the end of service. We want them to have a blessed Christmas, don't we? We know that they have four lovely children, and we just want to say we appreciate them. As Sister Button said, God gave us his best when he gave us them. He gave us the apple of his eye. He gave us those that was after his heart. He gave us those that wanted to walk in truth. He gave us those that walk under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Oh, oh you can clap for everything I've said. He gave us those that's going to labor with us, going to pray for us. And so we just want to be a blessing to them this season. Amen. Hallelujah. So please, it's not too late to dig in your pocket and to give unto God's gifts. You're giving to God's gift. When you bless them, you're blessing God. Amen. And he said, when you give, he'll bless you in return. Amen. So it's a promise with this giving today. So please, let's, let's fall accordingly and let's give. God bless you and we love you. God bless. Yeah, we do have a pretty dope um, bishop and first lady. We really do. We really do. <laughs> well, we here again. No, we're finally here, y'all. Friday is what? Yeah. Wait a minute. The Friday. Yes, that's what I want to hear now. Friday is what? That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. We're going to come in fellowship and have a good time. Um, I'm going to try to be brief with these announcements, but it's a lot in this announcement. First of all, the tickets are $8. If you have not purchased your ticket, you can get them from me today. The deadline is today. Um, if you cannot purchase your ticket, please come see me. Please, please, please come see me. Um, on that night, the doors will open at 6.30. And uh, we will begin at, well, doors will open at 6.30. We'll begin at 7. We will have an Italian buffet. Let's talk about the food. We got spaghetti going on. We got lasagna going on. We got meat lasagna and vegetable lasagna going on. We have shrimp and chicken, Cajun pasta going on, a salad, garlic bread. Um, it's an array of stuff and punch to go along with that as well. And let's talk about dessert. If you all know me, I like to do that dessert buffet, right? So y'all know it's going to be what? It's going to be five. That's what it's going to be. <laughs> so we want you to come um, partake in that. Let's talk about the um, activities that we're going to do. <laughs> karaoke. I heard you guys say you want to do karaoke. Now, if you want to do karaoke, you must sign up with Tiffany. Tiffany will be able to um, put your name on the list, give her the song that you want, so we can be prepared for you. Okay, karaoke is one of them. We got one for the teenagers. It's called the Saran's Rap Game. So teenagers, I, I don't really know what that game is. I just know it's a ball of Saran's Rap. I think you guys played it before. And everybody kind of get a little gift out of that. That's going to be fun. For the kids, we have cookie decorating. We have um, crafting. We have a whole craft table um, for them. And then there's another game that the adults will be playing. Two more games, actually. One is called the left-right game. If you're familiar with the left-right game, you have to, if you want to participate, you have to bring a um, gift card um, with a minimum of $15 on it. And you can participate in the um, left-right game. That game is so much fun because you never know which gift card you're gonna end up with. A lot of times it's the one that you thought you want, and you be like, I want that one, and end up with something else. But it's a really fun game, so please, please. And then that game we played on last Sunday, that was a fun game too, so we'll be playing that game as well. So look, we're gonna have lots of fun, good fellowship, good food. Come on out, come on out, come on out. The attire is um, Christmas, casual Christmas attire. Um, I I, I did not know if we got the okay or not, if the kids can come in Christmas pajamas. Um, I, I think the kids can come in Christmas pajamas. The kids can come in Christmas pajamas. But we all, everybody else will be in Christmas um, casual attire. Now, I need one more favor from you. One more. I need some volunteers. Because um, Jamie just cannot, Jamie and the lace team just cannot do this by herself. I need some volunteers. I need about five more volunteers in the capacity of serving and helping with the craft table for with the kids. So if you can do that, please see me at the church. I will be in the back there uh, with tickets with my pretty smile. And you come meet me, and I will be able to assist you. God bless you, and I cannot wait to Friday. All right, just about it's time for fellowship and fun. Amen. 
So get your ticket, bless the Lord, amen. We are renovating the whole church campus, amen, bless the Lord. And we're going to have so much fun in fellowship, amen. How many know there's so much that happens in fellowship, amen. And so get your ticket today. Look at somebody and say, the deadline is today. Amen. Come on, say, not tomorrow, not Wednesday. The deadline is today, amen. The anointing is in the what? We need to know how many we're preparing for, amen. And so please handle that business uh, today, amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for it. How about you? Bless the Lord. Amen. Come on, clap hands. Let's receive Sister Demetha as she come and blesses us. Amen. In ministry of dance. And we'll release the word of the Lord for today. Amen.
if you'd lift your hands, every hungry person, every thirsty person. Would you burn in me? <laughs> Baptize us afresh again. Anybody take the fire? Anybody want the fire? Bless the Lord. Burn in me. Burn in me. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. He said in the book of Malachi, I sit upon you as a refiner's fire. Amen. A consuming fire. Amen. How I many know God will consume everything that's not like him? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And I believe that Pentecostal winds are still blowing. Amen. I believe he's still healing the sick. He's still raising the dead. Amen. Bless the Lord. He's still working miracles. Somebody say he's still working miracles. Say it again. He's still working miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. Our children can be dismissed for children's church at this time. He is still working miracles. Amen. He's a miracle, wonder-working God. Amen. Hallelujah. And if you wait on him. When will he come through? Every time. Somebody said, I've never known him to fail. When will he come through? Every time. And he is a healer. He is exalted. He's everything that we need him to be. When we need him to be it. And we give him glory. And we give him honor. Because he's just that good. He's just that good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is still in the miracle wonder working business. He's still healing the sick. He's still raising the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. And you got to have faith for miracles. You got to believe God for miracles. You want to hear about a miracle? Anybody want to hear about a miracle? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Bishop Smith, who, bless the Lord, is a spiritual mother for me. Bless the Lord. Down through the years. Amen. Hallelujah. A bona fide prophet. Is that all right? Down through the years. Amen. Walked in her church at 21 years old. Bless the Lord. And, and uh, one of the first times there, bless the Lord, uh, didn't know me from Adam. Uh, the word of the Lord went, to get for, went forth and she said, give the mic to the prophet in the blue suit, praise the Lord, and, and uh, for the interpretation. And, you know, I wore loud colors back then. You wouldn't catch me in a powder blue suit now, but back then I... <laughs> maybe powder blue tie, but not the whole suit, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and she has been here and preached and, and prophesied and, amen, spoke the word of the Lord. I remember years ago, she uh, uh, walked in our church and said, you're going to move into a building. They're going to try to take the chairs, and the Lord won't let them. To, you're going to walk in the building, and they're going to leave the chairs. And, and years ago, we walked into a church, and all the chairs were already there. Prophesied, amen, spoken to all of my children, dedicated them to the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. When Elder Hillard got ill, bless the Lord. She came up to the hospital, served communion, and did all that type of stuff. Amen. When First Lady went through major surgery and God gave her a miracle. Amen. And she coded. Bless the Lord. She was on the phone praying all through the years. Is that all right? How I many know sometimes you got to have stuff stored up? Got to have stuff stored up. Bless the Lord. But God is a miracle wonder working wonder working God bless the Lord many of you know amen first lady went to amen her church on first on, on Mother's Day and preached bless the Lord a couple of weeks later bless the Lord I went over and carried amen she hasn't been to church in over a year because in January bless the Lord it's 20 2019 amen they were here with us for New Year's service amen how many remember that bless the Lord well in January of 2020 amen bless the Lord Hallelujah. She called me on the phone, bless the Lord. And she said, I'm only releasing this to five people. Her church and no one else knew about it. I'm only releasing this to five people. Five people that are standing in faith. Five people that will pray. Amen. She said, I was diagnosed with stage three. 
breast cancer. And for a whole year, she wasn't in her pulpit, wasn't at church. Imagine having to go through something like that during a pandemic. Is that all right? And she said, I don't need five people that's going to pray. See, sometimes when you're holding some miracle, you got to have. Is that all right? Long story short, in December of 2021, she's completely healed and cancer free. Oh, 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 come on. See, I don't have a voice this morning. Come on, I don't have a voice this morning. But out of a whole year, stage three, in the 70s, glory to God. But that was not unto death, but unto the glory of God. And she ministered for the first time on last Sunday. Somebody ought to give God praise. To God be the glory. Woo, it could have went another way. I said stage three. Anesthetic breast cancer. And I can release it publicly because she's released it publicly. Glory to God. See, that's another thing the church got to You got to know how to hold what you need to hold until it's time to. Went through surgery after surgery, chemo after chemo. But the report now is she's cancer free. Let's, let's give God praise. Hallelujah! 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 Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. So you got to know when God is real. You got to know when God is real. We don't show up in church every week just to buck and dance and say we're doing something. We serve a miracle working, wonder working God. When the enemy came in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. And how many know we called to cover each other? We call to stand with each other. That the strong bear the infirmity of the weak. And I and I just thought that was too much good news to keep to myself. Hallelujah! Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. That's a miracle. Glory to God. Ha! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when she called me on the phone to pray, the only five people she told, she said, my confession is I'm not going to die of this. And I said, my confession is I'm in agreement with that. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Up in there, that's what I'm saying. Glory to God. See, because if you don't tell the right person, they'll say, well, maybe. Maybe it's just your time. And then you got to know how to hold a prayer request. See, if somebody asks you to pray, you need to know how to hold it and pray. Not say what well, ain't saying nothing. I'ma tell you just so you can. No, 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 no. But you don't know who's praying and who's praying. I need to make sure your faith is where mine is. Glory to God. But like, why you ain't saying nothing? That wasn't my business to tell. It was my business to pray. Hallelujah. And we just thank God because he does miracles so great. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Come on, from stage three in your 70s. Come on here in a pandemic. Surgery after surgery after surgery. Couldn't preach. You had a whole church, didn't have a li didn't hear their pastor's voice for a year. And you got folks that got their pastor every Sunday still don't show up. You better not take stuff for granted. Glory to God. Somebody shout that God be the glory. Woo, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. John, fourth chapter. <laughs> John, fourth chapter. Glory. Somebody said again that God be the glory. Mm -mm 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 -mm. See, I need to hear stuff like that. Again and again. Even though you know God's a healer, when you hear it again, that's it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes I need to hear it again and again. Because if something suddenly come up on again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. John 4th chapter. Bless the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I I'll say this now. My voice is going through some complications. So if it goes in and out, just keep on going. Is that all right? I might can't preach it like I want to, but I, I'll whisper it. I'll talk it. Because the anointing is not in volume anyway. Glory to God. John, fourth chapter. Thank you. Thank you for praying. John, fourth chapter. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. John 4 and 3. Bless the Lord. So Jesus left the Judean. Bless the Lord. So Jesus left. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Judean countryside and went back to Galilee. To get there, he had to pass through Samaria. And he came into Sychar, the Samarian village that bordered the field that Jacob had given his son. Jacob's well was still there. Jesus, worn out by the trip, sat down by the well. It was noon. A woman, a Samaritan, came to draw water. Jesus said, would you give me a drink of water? His disciples had gone to the village to buy food for lunch. The Samaritan woman, taken aback, asked, how come you, a Jew, are asking me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jews in those days wouldn't be caught dead talking to Samaritans. Jesus answered, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, you'd be asking me for a drink and I would give you fresh living water. The woman said, sir, you don't even have a bucket to draw with and this well is deep. So how are you going to get this living water? Are you better? Are you a better man than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well? Little smart mouth. Bless the Lord. And drank from it. He and his sons and his livestock and passed it down to us. And Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. But anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst. Not ever. The water I give, amen, will be ushering spring within gushing fountains of endless life. And the woman said, sir, give me this water so I won't ever get thirsty, won't ever have to come back to this well again. And he said, go call your husband, hallelujah, and then come back. I have no husband, she said, hallelujah. That, that, that's nicely put. I have no husband, bless the Lord, hallelujah. You have five husbands, bless the Lord. You had five, you had five, and the man you're living with now isn't your husband, bless the Lord, hallelujah. You, you, you spoke, bless the Lord, you spoke truth there. True enough. So you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Jesus, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> I'll just stop reading there. I'm going to work my way through this text. Look at somebody say, break the pattern. Look at somebody else that break the pattern. Bless the Lord. Break the pattern. You can be seated. Father, we thank you for your anointing and your grace. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. We give you glory. Save, feel, set, free, and deliver. In Jesus' name, amen. I could point to you countless stories throughout Scripture that validate the truth I want to share with you today. The children of Israel's pattern of disobedience leads to repeated circling, bondage, and turmoil. Solomon's pattern of pursuit of pleasure resulted in a spiritual famine. The Pharisees' pattern of legalism resulted in a famine of a form, but no power. The man who positioned himself by the pool of Bethesda had a pattern waiting on someone to access God. Amen. Hallelujah. Get him in the pool first. Amen. And it resulted in 38 years of a paralyzed, amen, situation. When we look at our text this morning, there have been countless messages preached from this text. I personally have preached about the fact that Jesus will adjust his schedule to get to us. Bible say he had need to go through Samaria. Samaria. Is that all right? We preach that Jesus will go where others won't go. Is that all right? To reach people no one else will touch. Is that all right? We, we preach this message, amen, and we come from the angle about the water that satisfies. Bless the Lord. I remember Elder Hiller preached a message a while, long time ago. Jesus, the real thirst quencher. He will quench your thirst. However, there is something revealed in this account of Scripture uh, for our issue. Bless the Lord. Amen. That we want to deal with today. Amen. Because sometimes you go through some things that will seemingly produce a famine. Not necessarily a natural famine, but a spiritual famine. And I want to boldly and bluntly tell you, amen, that for many, there is a famine going on right now. And when I would now that this famine is harder to recognize or, or, or even challenge because it isn't as tangible, amen, as no ribs showing or, or easily being identifiable. Is that all right? Hallelujah. But oftentimes, if you're not careful, you can be right in the midst of a famine. Sometimes the famine is spiritual in nature. Symptoms are there, bless the Lord, if you know where to look. From the side of the lights, you see, hallelujah, you see it in glazed over eyes, lack of passion, lack of participation, lack of anticipation in worship, lack of concern, lack of action, lack of obedience to the word of God, lack of any discipline when it comes to study, lack of discipline when it comes to gathering as commanded by scripture. Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, even the more as you see the day approaching. All signs of famine. Somebody say famine. Sometimes you can see it. Sometimes you can feel it. Hallelujah. But, but before I'm accused of being the prophet of doom, let me stop here and share, amen, that there is no thing, bless the Lord, too hard for the Lord. Amen. And if you're in a rut, he can, he can pick you up. Hallelujah. If you're going the wrong way, you can do an about face and go the right way. Is that all right? Even if he has to reach way down, Jesus will do what? Pick you up. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Famine oftentimes is a direct result of patterns in our life. Amen. Because how I many know patterns, amen, can parch. Is that all right? If you ever see parched places of land, is that all right? Sometimes patterns can parch. That's my first point. Watch your patterns. Somebody said, watch your patterns. If you're online, bless the Lord, type that in, watch your patterns. Is that all right? Because patterns can parch. That word parch means to make or become dry yes, yes, yes. through intense heat or to make or become dry. And if you're not careful, amen, you can go through things and the enemy will want you to wear out and dry out. Is that all right? But I want you to notice that this account, hallelujah, is really about a woman living in a constant state of famine simply because of the patterns of her life. And Jesus initiates a spiritual conversation and tells this lady she can have spiritual water that will bring wholeness to her. I know you came for a natural drink, but the Lord said, I want to go deeper into your life, amen, and give you spiritual water that will bring wholeness 
to her. She reveals her emptiness. And I believe uh, desperation fulfilling when she says, please, when the Lord explained it to her, she said, please let me drink so I don't have to be thirsty again. Is that all right? She all but says, I'm tired of coming here every day. But, but what Jesus did, Jesus exposed the pattern that had produced famine in her life. Is that all right? What did Jesus say when she said, give me that water? Jesus said, let me interrupt the pattern. Go get your husband. And she said, I have no husband. And he said, you right, you have five, and the man you with right now isn't your husband. What Jesus was doing was attacking a pattern that this woman has of submitting and settling for a human relationship, hallelujah, in place of heavenly relationship. She constantly and consistently goes back to the same well, the same pattern, which for her was men. I can't get nobody in here. She's literally trying to fill up the void in her heart. She continues to visit the well over and over again, even though it's already proven that it could not and it would not satisfy. And how many of us continue to go back to the same well only to discover it won't fill us up? I can't get nobody in here. Bless the Lord. And many of us, if you tell the truth, there may be some areas in your life you keep going back to, going back to, going back to. And if you really tell the whole story, it ain't even filling you up like you want it to. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. It don't even satisfy anymore. A temporary fix. Temporary high. Don't even do it for you. Sometimes you're just doing stuff out of habit. You just doing it, bless the Lord, doing it just to do it. But too many of us are locked into patterns that parch. Yes. We locked into jobs that we hate. Worry patterns, even though we have proven that, that, that worry changes nothing and it's often needless, we, we fall into worry patterns. Can I teach? We have relationships that drain us but we won't get help or walk away. I can't get nobody in here. We got spending patterns that are unsustainable in hopes that the next purchase will fill us with peace. And you get it and it still don't satisfy. Repeated trips to the same well and we are continually thirsty. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. And Jesus stops this woman in her pattern and says that won't work. Here's what Jesus knew that we have to get to today. Bless the Lord. If you're going to break the famine in our own lives, sometimes you got to on purpose let some stuff go. It's throwing you off and holding you up from getting to your next level. Is that all right? You got to say, I, I need a break. I got a pattern. I got a pattern. I got a pattern. Bless the Lord. And if you look at your life, bless the Lord, you say, I got a pattern. I can run well. I can do good. But then there's a pattern. I go a long way straight. I can't get nobody in here. And then when I turn that curve about this time of the year, bless the Lord, I get about three days good. I can go about two weeks good, but I got a pattern. I can't get nobody in here. And this is the word of the Lord, and I won't be long this morning. Any need that is, any need that is repetitive needs a system to resolve it. Oh, I just said something right there. Any need that is repetitive, needs a system to resolve it. If you don't have a system to resolve a repetitive need, then that need will produce a pattern that produces a famine. This woman's repetitive need for a relationship with no system in place to fill it calls famine. Is that all right? Somebody say you need a system in place. Is that all right? Then that's my second point. You need a system. You, you need a system. You know, there's another account in Scripture that reveals the same truth in the story of Gideon. The account sets against the backdrop that there was no system in place to stop the enemy. And every time the Israelites would plant, hallelujah, the enemy would come in and steal their crops. I can't get nobody in here. Why? Because they had no system in place to uh, resolve the invasion. So famine was a result. So every time you planted, the enemy kept coming in and taking what you planted, and you get mad and crying about it, but you ain't put no system in place. I can't get nobody in here. 
And this is where we just want to say, you, we want to get deep in spiritual and just say, stop. Okay, stop. But you need a system in place. Just don't do it. Okay, but you need a system in place. How are you going to counterattack that attack? I went to the altar and prayed about it. Wonderful. But what system do you have in place? Well, I believe God and I got faith. Wonderful. But faith without works is what? You need a system in place. Is that all right? And many can't get free because you don't have a system in place. Oh, I'm preaching already. I got a practical illustration this morning. But you, you can have a mortgage. If you buy a house, which comes with a repetitive need to make a payment. Every month, thank you, bless the Lord. But if you have no system in place to secure that money necessary for that payment, no system in place to remind you to send that payment in, you're going to experience a famine. And the reason some of us are experiencing a spiritual famine is because we don't have any system in place to deal with our hunger. So we become comfortable in the famine. Is that all right? Because patterns that parch must be countered with patterns that provide. What am I saying? Bless the Lord. I'm saying it is essential to self-diagnose and pinpoint patterns. Bless the Lord. And then step in and put patterns in place. Put systems in place to stop it. And too many of us waiting on God to bring you out of the famine. And he tries. But because you haven't identified and stop the patterns that produce the famine in the first place. We eat and drink, and then the pattern kicks in, and we go right back into the famine. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. And here's what the Lord is saying. You got to go into 2022. Bless the Lord. Well, not just new joy. You got to come in with a new system. If you're going to secure some visions in your life, you got to say, I need a new system. I need a new way to work this. Oh, I'm talking. I got, I got to have a new way that I'm going to do this here. I, I can't do this like I did that. I'm going to keep ending right back up at the same place doing the same thing. Staying frustrated. Not getting a level of success I know I'm, I'm destined to have. I need systems in place. Look at somebody say, I need system in place. I need system in play. And ain't no need of you going out of this year looking sappy and looking sad and all that type of stuff. God doesn't have to respond to your feelings, but he has to respond to your faith. My, 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 my. Because see, when Jesus finds faith in the earth, he'll stop right in his track and say, wait a minute, somebody touched me. I, I need, I need, I need, I need a system. Look at somebody say, I need a system in place. You got to come on up. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to push you this morning. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You can't soak and stay down in that low place. Because if Satan can keep you in the sense realm, if he can keep you in the sense realm, he will destroy you. But if you keep him in the faith realm, you will put him under your feet. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. So I need a system. Somebody said I need a system. Lord, this is helping me this morning. I need a, I need a system. If the pattern that parched us is no prayer, then I can't just say, I'm going to pray more. You got to do more to say, I'm going to pray more. Then you got to establish a system of prayer, a discipline of prayer. I can't get nobody in here. Holly, I mean, if you got to be so, so technical to put an alarm on your phone, a reminder on your phone, I can't get nobody See, if the pattern that parched us is not being obedient and giving, I'm just going to give. I'm going to do better. I'm going to pay my tithes, head my offering, bless the Lord. I know that's all well, and, and, and that's good intention, bless the Lord. But you need to put a system in place. I don't care if it's automatic, but a system in place. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. A system, a pattern that God will reject. If I'm too tempted, bless the Lord. We, we got people that are so on Friday. Yeah. Let me get this out my hand as soon as I need to get it so there ain't no temptation. See, it might not take that for you, but for somebody else, you say, I need a system. Y'all don't want to talk. Y'all don't want to talk. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If the pattern that continues to produce famine in my life is a pattern of starting and stopping, then I need to set up a system of accountability with someone that will make me finish something. 
can't get nobody. If the pattern that drives me out is secrecy, then I need to put, I need to put in systems in place in my life that will expose me. If, if pride is the pattern that starves me, then I need to put a system in place of humbling experience to remind me of who I really am. If I got a pattern of isolation, now you put a system in place of a small group that, that'll put me around healthy relationships. If I'm famished because I got a pattern of self-centeredness, then systematically I need to serve so that I can focus on something else and not just me. Look at somebody say, get a system in place. I'm going to do better. Yeah, but if you don't have a system, that ain't going to happen no more. But if you don't have a system... Too many of us are like the woman at the well. You continue to repeat the same pattern year after year. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow, it's producing famine, and we do nothing about it. Is that all right? We got a sense of well-being, hoping that it will satisfy, hoping it'll make us whole. Bless the Lord. But really, you become a drier and more diminished and trapped by a pattern. Is that all right? You need a system. See, sometimes winning looks more like you being consistent than crossing the finish line. Well, y'all don't want to talk in here. Hallelujah. Race and given to the swift nor the strong, but to them that can't endure to the end. Is that all right? See, see you're going to move into a time now that, that not quitting is going to be your biggest flex. I said not quitting is going to be your biggest split. Glory to God. Through every season of your life, hallelujah. Look at somebody say, if I can just be consistent. If I can just be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, not running and stopping and quicking and turning around and then starting over. You're doing so much turns, you got your own self dizzy. No, no, no. I need to be consistent. And sometimes while God is perfecting you, he'll hide you. Sometimes your progress, sometimes your progress will keep you away from others. So the next time you visible and available, you're going to have some fruit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, I'm asking you, preparing you to shift you in to where we're going, to shift you into another year. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm asking you, you got to do some of the hardest work you've ever done. You got to examine your own life and actually look for patterns. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And counteract it with systems. See, because today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Woo! Today's complacency is tomorrow's captivity. Jesus is at your well today, and he's asking you to go back and own up to your pattern. Is that all right so you can break it? Hallelujah. The Lord said, I want you to see where you at. Go get your husband. I ain't got no husband. You show sure right. I need you to recognize a dysfunction. And you got to put a system in place. To resolve it. You need a system because maybe that area is a weakness. I can't get nobody in here. I know you're strong over here, but you might not be as strong in every area. So you need a system in place. Jesus will show up, will show you what it takes and break that pattern in your life. Jesus knows right where you at and he knows where you where you going and he knows where you are in. His hand is not too short that he cannot save. His ears not, hallelujah, that he cannot hear. Bless the, here comes the woman at the well. And said, Jesus said, give me a drink of water. She said, are you talking to me? Don't you know I'm a Samaritan? You a Jew? Bless the Lord. We ain't supposed to even be talking. All right, that's what she said. Had a chip on her shoulder and offers every excuse not to obey the voice of God. Yeah. Well, And I know sometimes we got excuses. Well, Lord, I can't, I can't do it because of this. Lord, I can't do it because of that. I can't serve you because I'm too fat. I got too many problems. I got too many. I got too many struggles. Well, Lord, I don't have a nice car. Well, Lord, I don't have this. I can't speak like that. And so use every excuse. I done made too many poor choices. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But I know if you could have fixed your mess, you would have been then fixed it by now. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. And Jesus asked this woman for a drink of water. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. She couldn't believe that you would ask someone that's messed up as her for a drink of water. Is that all right? But when you're trying to get free, you got to fight through some things. When you're breaking through patterns, you got to fight through some things. You got to recognize some things. So you can't want, you won't want freedom and not recognize. 
Jesus, I, I need you to know where you are. Is that all right? I need to know where you are. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I need to know where you are. Bless the Lord. When you're breaking free, you're going to have to fight through some stuff, even labels. Wow. Yeah. Even labels. My next point, labels linger. Wow. When you're breaking patterns, you got to break through labels. <laughs> Notice that on the request for a drink, the Samaritan woman instantly places a label on Jesus. She brings up that he's a Jew. You're not supposed to be talking to Samaritans. She's simply taking a bias, a prejudgment that had been passed down from one generation to the next. Is that all right? And before there can be any meaningful interaction, introduction, she applies the label of division. I can't get it. And this thing and slapped it on this. Bless the Lord. And I've been the Lord like, look, look, lady, I'm trying to fix you. I'm already tired. The Bible said when Jesus showed up, he was already tired. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. She had never encountered Jesus before. It never treated cruelly. He never called her a name. Bless the Lord. He had never sneered at her, belittled her, shamed her, or degraded her. He simply asked a question. Give me something to drink. Is that all right? Hallelujah. But labels, bless the Lord. But this lady shows us that labels linger. Have you ever put 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 a, a, a name tag or something, a type of stick on your shirt, and then you, you forgot that it was on there and you washed it? Without taking the label off, sometimes it gets gooky and the residue is still there. That's what labels do for you. Bless the Lord. You may not even be aware of it, but labels leave a residue behind. The label may have been forgotten about or out of sight for years, but then out of nowhere you have an interaction and it resurfaces. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Somebody said labels linger. And sometimes we're exposed to labels early. If the residue doesn't surface in you, then it'll show up in your children. That's why you got to watch what you say, who you call what. I can't. What you say about. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because labors, they they don't just linger. (laughs) They also limit. Bless the Lord. My next point, labels limit. Amen. Labels limit. Somebody said labels limit. This woman tries to use a label to distance herself from Jesus, and she fails to realize that labels limit. Jesus' response exposes this truth. He said, if you knew the generosity of God and who I am, if you knew, you wouldn't limit me by labeling me, but you will see me for who I am. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You're going through all this stuff. But he said, if you knew who was asking you for some water, if you knew that it was the generosity of God that I'm even talking to you. I can't get nobody in here. You worried about something I'm not worried about. Hallelujah. I'm trying to free you from a pattern and a dysfunction. Bless the Lord. Because labels will limit. If you knew, you would limit me by labeling me. You would see me for who I am. Bless the Lord. If you didn't box me in by labeling me. How many times God trying to get stuff to us and we can't get it? Because it's not even a label that you put on somebody. It's what you heard about somebody else. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. It ain't even your testimony of who they are. It's what you heard on the street about somebody. And now God trying to get something to you and you can't even get it. Is that all right? If you didn't box me in by labeling me as white, black, brown, woman, pretty. Handsome, ugly, fat, short, tall, worthless, lazy, ignorant, stuck up, arrogant. Is that all right? We miss things because of labels. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. You won't even receive from who you need to receive from because of a label. The Bible says there's no male nor female in the body of Christ. Listen, when I'm listening, listen, bless the Lord. When I'm looking at someone, I'm looking at the preacher, I'm not listening for a male or female's voice. I'm looking for the voice of God. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. That's what I'm looking for. You're going to let agenda hinder the voice of God? But it's the labels we push on people, and they limit. They limit our ability to receive the gift in them. Is that all right? Because how we perceive dictates how we receive. How we perceive dictates how we receive. I'm going to say that again. How we perceive dictates how we receive. How we perceive dictates how we receive. It limits our ability to impact because you can't truly help someone you don't value. 
Oh, come on here. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. That's why the song said, Lord, let them see you in me. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And you got to get to the place, God, I don't want to be so common. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. That I lose the value, that I lose the respect, and folks can't receive right. I don't care how long you've been in church with so-and-so. You still got to say, I want to see in you the gift of God. I want to see in you the anointing that's on your life. Because if I ever lose that value... Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Somebody say, no, 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 no. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. See, if you don't understand the value of extravagant worship, you will call someone else's worship a waste. Come on, alabaster box. Bless the Lord. You don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster box. Bless. If you don't know the value of my worship, you will say I'm doing too much. And I'll tell you, you know, I ain't doing enough. Praise the Lord. I'm trying to do some more. Lord, if I had a voice to preach this, glory to God. You're doing too much. You know, you know, you know that girl that went through. You know that man have survived. Bless the Lord. You know, you don't know their testimony. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The value, the respect, the submission. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. But what label have you put on someone that keeps that person from being able to bless you or keeps you from blessing them? Is that all right? They old. Out of touch. They young. They try to give me a word. Look how young they are. You better, yeah, that's right. Still got milk on the bread. You better, you you will miss God when the Bible's out of the mouth of babes. If I ordain, <laughs> bless the Lord. They, they old, they out of touch, they too young, they hard headed. Look at all their failures. Is that all right? Our labels limit our blessing and being a blessing. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And I found out, bless the Lord. You, you know, you can tell what you what you really about by, by what you think about somebody else. See, people who are prone to think the worst about others are typically those that think more highly of themselves than they ought to. Bless the Lord. When you understand there's none perfect but the Father, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. People who are prone to think the worst, oh, you must have forgot. You, you, you talking more highly of yourself than you ought to. You, you, you must have forgot that God then brought you from a mighty long way. You, you must have forgot that God... You must have forgot that you still got some issues. My God, hallelujah, bless the Lord. But, but, but labels limit, bless the Lord. And many people miss their breakthrough. Look at all she had to go through. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Almost missed the breakthrough. This woman almost missed the greatest gift simply because she wanted to label Jesus. Hallelujah. And that label would limit him. But hallelujah, the powerful news though, bless the Lord, is that labels can be refused and removed. Look at somebody that said labels can be refused and removed. Bless the Lord. Jesus refused to let this woman label him. He pushed past her label to bless her. That's why I love him like I do. Is that all right? Hallelujah. In fact, I want to say it like this. Jesus was colorblind, but he wasn't kingdom blind. See, if Jesus had accepted the label, if he would have said, you show sure right, I should have been talking to you. You're right. Never mind. Forget it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I, you know, you probably shouldn't be seen to me. You know what I'm saying? You'd have five husbands and one you would. What if somebody tell you, go back home and tell you, you know, she, she talking to another man at the well. You know what I'm saying? We, we got a whole nother. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. But, but labels can be refused and remove. Jesus refused to let this woman label him and he pushed past her label to bless her. Bless the Lord. In fact, I, I want to say, hallelujah, he, 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 you know, he wasn't kingdom blind. See, see, if Jesus had accepted the label, this is the whole point I'm trying to get to and allowed the label to limit him, uh, the woman would have never been birthed into the kingdom. Instead, he brushes aside every label and says, I am he, I am the Messiah that you're waiting for. And that's the lesson for us to learn today. Everywhere we go, hallelujah, there's going to be a temptation to label. Yeah. 
Yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Or we're going to have someone attempting to label us before we have any chance to speak. Is that all right? And we can spend our time placing or holding on to those labels, hallelujah, and our culture, or we can realize that we're, we're no longer called to further our culture, but we're called to establish kingdom culture. And, and you got to get to the point. What did Jesus say? I didn't come to make a reputation for myself. I don't care what they saying about me and you and all this stuff. Is that all right? It's time for kingdom culture to show up. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We should be, war we should be warring for kingdom re re reclamation. Is that all right? On earth as it is in heaven. On earth as it is in heaven. But they said this about you. Eh, and on earth, I'm about my father's business. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. You can refuse the label. Bless the Lord. They said you ain't real. I'm about my father's business. Is that all right? And am I going to let a label stop me from doing what God has called me to do? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you too bossy. I may be bossy a little bit. That's right. But I'm a leader. I can't get nobody in here. My anointing is leadership. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and you know, and, and if, I, if I'm going to be the head and not the tail, there got to be a little boss in me. I said, if I'm going to be the head and not the tail, it got to be a little boss in me. You know what I'm saying? It ain't my head, but we ain't going to get nothing done. Is that all right? We can refuse to label. We can refuse. Is that all right? Hallelujah. What, what I want is this kingdom to be established. And I'm not mixed up on the stuff you mixed up about. Somebody say it's time for kingdom culture. Yeah, in your home, in your church, in finances, in every area of my life, we want his kingdom to come and his will to be done in every area of my life. And that's what you got to get to the place that I'm not satisfied where I am. I'm not satisfied where I am. The kingdom is called Zion is calling me to a higher place. I'm pushing into 2022 and it's higher, 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 higher. And folks around you just want to be satisfied. And folks around you just say, just take it what it is. Is that all right? And you got to let folk know, it's not that I don't appreciate where I am right now. Bless the Lord. You just know God is calling for something better. It's not that I'm not content at where I am right now. I just know that God is calling me up. And I just know that God is calling me higher. Look at somebody say, it's your next level pulling on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bless the Lord. And if you let God do it, you don't have to. If you let God do it, you don't have to. Sometimes you guys say, do it, do it, do it. Do it, do, 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 do it. Do it, do it, do it. If I let God do it, I don't, if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight me back, I hear higher. I feel higher. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And I got to let go of things. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And, and you know, you know, because cluttered hands can't climb mountains. And you got to let go of some extra stuff, the stuff that don't mean you no good. That's what he told her. I need you to recognize where your husband right. ain't got one. That's right. That need to be a pattern in your, that need to be a change in your life because cluttered hands can't climb mountains. Maybe you got too much going on. That's why you can't go any higher. Is that all right? But Jesus refused and removed the label because he knew who he really was. He knew he was the Messiah. He knew what he came to do. Bless the Lord. See, we will struggle and refuse or remove our labels. Watch this. We will struggle. Hallelujah. We will refuse, bless the Lord, or remove our labels if you don't know who you are. You're going to struggle if you don't know who you are. Look at somebody say, if you don't know who you are in this next season, you're going to struggle. Bless the Lord. You're going to struggle. You're going to struggle. You got to know who you are. Hallelujah. Because if you don't know who you are, anytime somebody say something about you, you're going to shut you down. Right, going to box you in. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. See, low self-esteem will leave you when you begin to see yourself like the Father sees you. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, we have confidence as a benefit of being in Christ. We have confidence as a benefit of being in Christ. See, labels only seem to stick when we haven't had grip, when we haven't come to grips of who we are. 
See, sometimes you got to say, that's what you say, that's what you say, but I am who I am by the grace of God. I am who I'm called to be by the grace of God. That's how you break low self-esteem. It's not even about what I think about me. It's who he's called me to be. I'm the lender, not the party. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. Hallelujah. That's how you, it's who he says about me. See, we have confidence as a benefit of being in Christ. Is that all right? Do you know who you are today? Do you know, do you know who God has labeled you to be? Do you know the freedom God has put on you? I know the restriction man didn't put on you. Today I'm telling you, in order for us to be who God has called us to be, quit labeling. Quit being late. Stop that. That's stopping you. Is that Lord? Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. You can't stop being a parent because your child don't like correction. You can't stop telling the truth because your children think you mean. You, you, you can't check out of training because they don't like the lesson. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And this is, what you, this is what you got to do. Bless the Lord. He hasn't forgotten you. Bless the Lord. The Bible says, here's the whole thing. My last point, you got to be willing to leave it. Somebody still willing to leave it. This is when I knew the woman got it. This, this is when I knew she got, when the revelation hit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When the revelation hit. Uh, go to verse 27. Bless the Lord. John 4. Bless the Lord. Verse 27. Hallelujah. Somebody said, break the, break the pattern. Bless the Lord. When he said all that, she said, give me this water, right? Bless the Lord. Just then, the disciples came back, and they were shocked. They couldn't believe he was talking with that kind of woman. Is that all right? Yeah. No one said what they were thinking, but their faces showed it. <laughs> you ever been in a situation like that? Ain't nobody said nothing, but it was written all over your face. You don't have to say a word. Hallelujah. The woman took the hint and left. And in her confusion, she left her water pot. I can't get nobody in here. Back, the, hallelujah, in the village, and she ran, and she told the people, verse 29, when it comes to a man who told me all about the things I did, who knows me inside and out, do you think this could be the Messiah? See, here's the thing. When you really want that living water, you willing to leave. I never really saw this in the text. She left the water pot. <laughs> Well, Jesus told you if you get it, you will never thirst again. I guess I won't be needing this no more. See, when you really won't change, you start leaving stuff behind and say, I ain't going to need this no more. I got the living water. She left the pot. Look at somebody say she left the pot. Her fix, she had been, she had been, we know she was a young woman because she had been carrying her own water pot. She already had five husbands living with number six, but didn't realize she had just met Jesus. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Ordinary woman for this day. Bless the Lord. Look, she was going to look for something to satisfy her longings. She came with a pot. Because this was going to satisfy me today. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And sometimes, you know, you bring stuff. You try to drown stuff out. You try to smoke it out. You try to smoke out memories of yesterday, but when you wake up, it's still there on you. No matter how high you get, bless the Lord, it's still there. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. You're not here because God got something for you to do. She left the water pot. She left everything that kept her from obeying God. The water pot represented who she was before she met the master. Is that all right? What are you holding on to? What vice are you holding on to when God says, I got a new way of doing things. I got, I got, I'm doing something fresh and new in your life. Or do you got a water pot just in case? No, he told her, if you drink of me, you will never thirst again. Look at somebody say, she dropped the water pot. Hallelujah. See, an unsatisfied person, empty person, a person in lack, that's who they was before they met Jesus. Is that all right? But she left the water pot. It's just like blind Bartimaeus. When he, when, when he got healed, the Bible said he threw off his cloak. He threw off his beggar clothes. Why? 
because I'm not going to need this anymore. Ooh, don't you take, don't you go into 2022 taking stuff in. Is it a change or is it a change? Are we doing something different? Or are we doing something different? Come on, come on here, bless her. Why, why are you still connected to it? Are, are, are we making a change? Are we making a change? Or are we going to take it into a new? What are we doing? Is that all right? Hallelujah, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. See, the blessing that God has for you is more important than those, hallelujah, things you're holding on to. What God has in store for you is much greater than those things you're holding on to. Is that all right? And that's why God reminds you of who you are. Why am I holding on to stuff? Glory to God. I'm telling you, these last days of this year, I know you want to wait till New Year's Eve service to get a real good word, but, but by the time New Year's Eve service comes, you're going to be behind. Because I'm not trying to cross over with drunk junk. I'm not crossing over with extra stuff. By the time that comes, listen. I want to be free as a bird. Y'all don't want to talk in here. Ready, set, go. Bless the Lord. Did God remind you of who you are? Why you don't need this water pot? I got living water. Left that pot, became an evangelist. Said, come see a man. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, because God will remind you of who you are. Look at somebody say, God will remind you of who you are. Bless the Lord. He'll remind you, and you got to know what God has said about you. you. You don't let things validate you. You don't let people that come and go validate you. Bless the Lord. You don't let people validate your anointing. You know, bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I looked, bless the Lord, at this time last year. Bless the Lord. Church was jam-packed. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I look at it where, where it is right now. Bless the Lord. It's not the same testimony. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And I said, Lord, it seems like I'm in a season right now. Hallelujah. Well, I got lack of majority support. But I got a real strong remnant support at the same time. And God will always do a thing with a remnant. I ain't got no voice. That God will do some things with a remnant. Come on, say he'll do it with a remnant. He'll take a people out of a people. He'll use a few good men. He'll do you like you did Gideon. And he said, I only need 300 people that are lap water like a dog. Sometimes you don't need the majority. You just need somebody that'll ride with you. You just need somebody that'll stand with you. You just need somebody that'll hold your arms up. You just need somebody that will pray you through. Look at somebody said, but we got a strong remnant. Say it again, but we got a strong remnant. And you don't look at what left. You look at what remains. Because the Bible says in Revelation, strengthen those. Strengthen those things that remain. High five three people and say, I got something left. The reason I can't quit is because I got some left. The reason I can't throw in the towel, I got some left. Hallelujah! 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 Sister Mel, I told the Lord, I said two things if you keep doing. If we keep making impact and you keep making provision, we're keeping on going. If impact is being made and you keep on making a way, we're going to keep on going. Because it's for God I live and for God I die. Got a charge to keep. Because, 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 because God supports you. And when heaven endorses you, hallelujah, if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. God supports you. And he, he, and God supports you and who he's called you to be. And many of you missing the mark because you're spending most of your time looking for support. 
just go. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Everything I survived didn't demand everybody's support. You didn't get to where you are at this age in your life because you had everybody's support. Sometimes all you had was God. Sometimes all you had to do, you didn't have no encouragers. You had to encourage yourself in the Lord. You didn't have nobody to say, go ahead. You had to tell your own self to go ahead. Sometimes you didn't have nobody to call to lay hands on you. You had to put oil on your own hands, lay hands on your own hands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, everything I survived didn't demand everybody's support. Come on here. Some of you raise your children. You didn't have everybody's support. Didn't have family support. Sometimes you didn't have a good baby daddy. But did God make a way for you? Did God raise you up? Did God do it? Look at somebody say, stop back and pray anew. I survived it with a lot of support and I survived it with the little's report. All I know if God be for me, who can be against me? All I know. All I know, all I know. Said again, everything I survived didn't demand everybody's support. Sometimes you asked for support and didn't get it. Sometimes you thought you had it and didn't have it. But you had to go ahead on anyway. You had to go for it anyway. You had to wake up in the morning. Put one feet in front of the other. And still go ahead on anyway. Who you thought would be there. Wasn't even there. Look at somebody said stop back and brand new. You in a new season. You in a new season. You in a new season because God told you you in a new season. It ain't what it look like. See, because sometimes when you're in a new season, sometimes the weather feel like an old season. But don't worry, you still up in there. Come on here, we in strange days in the natural. You know we in the winter, but every day you wake up, it don't feel like it's the winter. But you in a winter season. I can't get nobody in here. And you got to make a decision in your life. I'm preaching better than you shout. Hallelujah. You got to make a decision in your life. that I got to go ahead. You got to make a decision. I got to hang on. You got to make a decision. I got to be who God has called me to be. I'm going to have what God has called me to have. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Look at somebody say, I'm going to be it. I'm going to do it. Because he said it. Look at somebody say, break the pattern. Break the pattern. Come on, point to somebody and say, break the pattern. 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 You going down, whatever. You won't make it, whatever. You won't prosper, whatever. You won't thrive, whatever. Whatever. Look at somebody and say, whatever. You gonna move into a season that you pack in light. You gonna move in the season where people gonna used to send you attached to stuff and you walk away like you don't need it. And they gonna come and say, oh, Tonisha, you left this and you gonna say, I left it on purpose. What you gonna do with it? I don't care what you do with it. I don't care who you give it to. All I know, that ain't my mess no more. That ain't my trash no more. That ain't my issue no more. Well, they got what you had. They can have it. I left it on purpose. It wasn't for my benefit. It was a water pot. It was heavy. I don't care what you do with it. What you want to do with it? I don't care. What you? That's the seed you're going to move into. I don't care. You don't care. I don't care. But you had that for so long. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I didn't live long enough. I don't even care no more. And I know you want to keep reattaching me to it. But I'm in a whole new season now. I can't get nobody. 
I'm sick of carrying stuff for people that should have been carrying something for me. Matter of fact, God. Look at somebody say, I don't care what you do. You just left it like that? I did. Because when I got the revelation, I didn't want to carry it not one more day. When I got the revelation, I didn't even want to carry it back to the house. When I got the revelation, I didn't even... Do what you want to do with it. Matter of fact, take it back to bro man at the house. Because maybe he should have been getting the water pot instead of me anyway. <laughs> maybe he should have been getting the water pot. Why I'm out, matter of fact, why I'm out here? Matter of fact, get the water pot, package it up, put a bow on it, and pass it. I don't care what you do with it. See, when you free, you don't care no more. You don't care no more about being attached to stuff that didn't mean you no good. Is that all right, blessing? You, you don't even care no more. You, you get tired of carrying stuff and carrying a load that wasn't meant for me to carry. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I prophesy the last few days of this year is going to be days and times of relief. You're going to start taking off layers and layers and layers of hurt, layers of dysfunction, layers of stuff that ain't right, layers of stuff that's unjust, layers of stuff that you've been carrying, layers of stuff that you've been holding on to. I can't get nobody in here. I'm looking for God to purge some things out of my life. I'm looking for God to take the old thing. water pot. I bet she said I was tired of carrying that pot anyway. It was heavy. And that was some work. Because I had to dig in the well. And even the text of that well was deep. I can't get so I had to carry the pot then draw the water all the way down from the way. Then I had to take it all the way back to the house. And I'm still not satisfied. Look at somebody say, I'm over that. I'm over that, but I got to break a pattern. I got to break a pattern. I got to break a pattern. What are you holding on to? That just in case. See, when you really want to be free, you really want to be free. You holding on to it. Let me just hold on to this just in case. Let me hold on to it just to, Some bridges you need to burn. Because it's, sometimes it's too easy to find it and locate it. Is that pull it up again? Is that all right? Hallelujah. What did Jesus say? Give me water. Give me a drink. And you will never thirst again. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you. Thank you for grace. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for your power. Thank you for the anointing to break patterns. Thank you for anointing to break cycles. Thank you for your anointing. We bless what you're doing right now. We bless how you're moving right now. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that we're moving into days now. We're moving. We're moving into days that you're doing a new thing in us. You're preparing us not for just where we are, but you're preparing us for the days to come. You're preparing us for where we're going. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Won't take nothing for our journey now. We've come too far to turn around now. So, Father, you told us to lay aside every sin and wait and wait and wait 
Everything ain't a sin, but it's a weight. And wait. My heavy load. It's been heavy. It's been heavy. It's been heavy. Glory to God. Lay aside every sin and weight that so easily, easily besets you. Father, thank you for a greater grace and a greater anointing. And I pray that as this word was preached today, that yokes were being destroyed. Burdens were being removed. Change is coming. Labels are being broken. Labels that limit us. Labels that limit us. Labels that limit. Labels, 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 labels. God said, I'm releasing a grace over you. Somebody's trying to put a stigma on someone's name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. But there is an anointing. Glory to God. God said, I'm about to give you a grace in spite of every label. I'm about to give you a grace in spite of what they said. I'm about to get a grace in spite of what they're. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, just receive the anointing from this word. Oh, I feel the yoke destroying, burning, removing power of God. Come on. It's tangible in the room right now. Woo! It's tangible in the room right now. Come on, breakthrough is happening right where you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm moving, but there's anointing here right there where you're standing. Just ask the Lord to break every unbeneficial pattern in your life. Every unbeneficial pattern. Come on. Come on. We all got them. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to every unhealthy pattern. Glory to God. Every pattern that doesn't line up with my destiny. Glory to God. Every pattern that doesn't line up with what you have said about me. Come on here. Glory to God. Come on. We can all be in the same room and all receive our breakthrough and all receive our breakthrough. Hallelujah. Every unhealthy pattern. I did run well. I started well. But then I got hindered. But then I slowed down. But then I got weak. But then I got vulnerable. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I do good being led by your spirit. And then I get led by my emotions. I get in the flesh and led by my feelings. Glory to God. And then my feelings start driving. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Then I start acting out by how I feel. And not what you said. Not about shy. Hear the Lord say, I'm interrupting that pattern. I'm interrupting that pattern. I'm interrupting that pattern. I'm interrupting that pattern. Ooh, I feel this. I'm interrupting that pattern. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Jesus breaks every fetter. Come on, just wave those hands. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you for your move. Thank you for your move. Thank you for your move. Woo! Thank you for your anointing and your move. Ha, 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 ha. la bahushata. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doors of our church are now open as there's anyone that's not saved. If you're a backslider in the house, 
Today is the day of salvation. We offer Christ to you. Come on, he wants to fill the hunger, fulfill the void, the hunger in your heart, glory to God in your soul, the thirsting in your soul. Hallelujah. If there's one, three calls. If you're not saved, if you're a backslider, you want to rededicate your life to the Lord today. Or if you're here, bless the Lord, don't have a church home. He said, I give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Jesus. You need a watchman for your soul. You need to be covered. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I know of a good church. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I know of a place. Glory to God. I know of a good church. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm just telling you what I know. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. You need to be in a place where your soul is fed and that you can be covered. Amen. And give you proper Bible teaching and preaching. Bless the Lord. If you're online and you would like to connect in one of those ways, put a seven in the comments and we will reach out to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.